Well, this video is brought to you by the lack of freedom of speech on YouTube. You know what's been going on. God, I can't put out most of the stuff I want to put out anymore. That's just, that's the reality of it. You mention one word, you got a little yellow asterisk or whatever the heck you call it by the monetization icon. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, here's uh, Freedom Bird, Freedom Bird of Free Speech. Anyway. I just want to say something else about some of the things, like a lot of people have been making a lot of market predictions over the last several years about silver, but there are some axioms that, you know, they're just truisms that pretty much will always play out. One of the problems that people have been getting wrong, though, is that we've been on the all-time longest bull run, equities bull run, in, in stock market history, U.S. stock market history. At one point in time, it was the third largest bull, longest bull run, and then it was the second largest bull run, which was the longest bull run was back in the 1920s, which led up to the 1929 stock market crash. But then it actually had a re rebound, and when the real big crash came was in 1932. <clears throat> but um, today, it's the longest bull run ever. It's the most leveraged market. It has the most um, leveraged, in other words, the, the markets are fueled by loans. And the P.E. ratios are terrible. And, you know, I, I just want to say this, you know, as as no matter what people think change changes a lot in modern times, it never changes. You know, here's a picture back from, I think, the 1930s. But, you know, even back in the 1920s, there was a much, much stronger argument for prolonged prosperity because the age of mechanization had just came into being. There was standardization of parts. There was the efficient assembly line method. There was, um, you know, transportation of goods by trucks and no longer by, you know, horse and carriage and things like that. There was electrification in the homes. There was faster communications. You know, astronomically different from 1890 to 1920, right? So you think the age of prosperity, it, at that time, I would have never believed everything would have fell apart. Now, today, you look at the age of prosperity, it's mainly the Internet, which is artificial. It's totally artificial. It doesn't really produce anything per se. I like the Internet because sometimes, you know, if you need to pull up some rare part for something or that's, you know, I remember back in the day, you know, if you're looking for a part for an engine or something or some kind of apparatus that you got or some kind of appliance or whatever it is or machinery it was very difficult to get it. you have to go to these different stores and they look it off thumb through the catalog today you just look them up online and get them and also manuals and how to do things that's great but for the most part though the internet is basically driven by mindless giddy minds that are just i don't know they're just wasting time they're wasting time you know that's really what it is um the markets themselves are basically an illusion. It's almost as if um, the markets themselves are drunk on you know, the fueling of capital into them from the you know Federal Reserve. And really, the only people that are really driving the markets are the largest banks. In other words, the largest investors. I don't think there's that many small investors in the market as there used to be. You know, back in the 1920s, all small investors were in the market. Today, it's mainly fueled by the top people. Which I think, you know, they probably, I know I read a couple of years ago that uh, the Rothschilds and Warren Buffett are now more investing in foreign currency than U.S. currency. And the dollar has taken a large hit since uh, even Trump's gotten in office, but it's still very strong. But um, basically, most people are looking at the numbers in the market. They're almost like looking at it through um, the eyes of an alcoholic because... It's not, it's not the reality of the situation, and I'll explain further. The reason is, if you look at, see, one of the principles, too, that, that um, you know, when you have a very, very, very robust economy, there's going to be a high demand on commodities. One of the ones they call, that's a particular one to focus in on, is called cop, Dr. Copper. They call it Dr. Copper because the price of copper, as the price goes up, well, I mean, in other words, there's more demand for copper, which means it's widely used in throughout industry, not just, you know, industry whereby you're making widgets, but also construction industry, which is actually 
about 50% of all the economy in a nation, in at least our nation, the construction re industry, when you're taking all the corollary industries that are associated with, with which could be realtors, uh, closing agents, and lenders, mortgages, and, you know, the banks that lend mortgages, um, you know, and, and copper being used so widely throughout not just the construction industry, like with the electric, but also widely throughout, you know, everything we use. In other words, it could be appliances or engines or whatever. Copper's in a lot of different things. Commodities in general should be going strong when there's a strong economic industrial manufacturing base. And, you know, one of the indications we don't have that is because, you know, we can see that the commodities in general are depressed. The only commodity I saw that was really did very well over the last few years is palladium. But palladium will take a massive hit if the markets come tumbling down. It's 95% uh, industrial metal. It will take a massive hit. But on a, on a other side with palladium, I actually want to show that uh, chart right here right now. You look today, palladium went up quite a bit, $24, 2.59%. That's because the markets took a rebound. Um, but on the, and I've been mentioning palladium a little bit over the years, and I kind of want to mention it here because um, to me, I think it's dangerous to get into it right now at that price. But um, one of the things that's going to drive palladium up a lot is tension with Russia. And and since 42% of all palladium comes from Russia, it's particularly from one mine, that's 42% of all worldwide palladium comes from Russia. And with 39% of the world's supply coming from one mine, Norilsk mine in northern Siberia, you know, any tensions with Russia can really drive the price of palladium up astronomically. Not that it's irreplaceable, but, you know, in the short term, things aren't re irreplaceable, you know. In other words, things can be replaced, and, you know, that's that's one of the games they used to say with silver. It can't be replaced, but, you know, um, necessity is the mother of all invention. There's always a price point where silver can go too high. Now, obviously, silver is too low. And people have been looking at the prices just like old girl here staring into her cell phone, sitting on it, you know, sitting on her butt. Um, it, it's like it hasn't been going anywhere forever, and... To me, that's quite surprising. But the other thing is, what was quite surprising that's all related to this, is that the markets, the general equities, have been going up forever. You know, busting through 20,000 on the Dow, and now it's up over 24,000. Sure, it took a couple hits. There's some indications that it's going to roll over. It might, it might not. But the reality of the situation is that gold and the markets in general and gold is somewhat tied to silver pretty strongly. Um, gold in the markets in general are inversely related. So if the markets take an extreme dive, everybody gets fearful. They look for a safe haven, and they go into gold, which can help the price of silver. The other side of it is, too, if we have any kind of major conflict in the Middle East, now maybe that's going to happen with this Bolton guy, you know, that Trump is appointed, because... Um, Bolton is a war hawk and a half. You know, he just wants to attack Iran and all this kind of garbage. I don't know if that's going to fly because if we get into conflict with Iran, we're going to wind up probably getting into conflict with Russia, which in case the commodities can go right through the roof. But then there's not going to be too many safe havens in the United States, in my opinion, if, you know, this all plays out. In my opinion, all this stuff with, you know, global conflict is in the cards and it's planned. But I don't think it's still, I don't think it's right away. It might be in the early 2020s or mid-2020s. Um, I think it's planned. The reason it's planned is because the long-range goal is that they're going to eliminate um, national armies and put, you know, their plan is to have a one-world army. If there's a bad enough global war, global conflict, people accept that idea that nations should not have um Militaries, and it'll just be one world army. That's why I think it is going to come about, but I don't think it's going to come about right away. Despite all the talk you heard about from Russia and Vladimir Putin, a lot of that was pre election talk about, you know, any of our allies get attacked, we're going to attack them back. So, 
You know, one of the things just to remember is not to get in too much with all the garbage fluff that most people have been doing. Like old girl here's got a stint motor. Well, I would have loved this bike, to tell you the truth. This is a bike that doesn't have to change that hydraulic fl- fluid. You got, that, you got the old Springer front end in it. And boy, I tell you, those Springer front ends, they really designed those things very nice way back when. It's surprising how well a good job they did on that. Um, I don't know. They improve things and they screw things up at the same time. Um, but, you know, another game that's going on, too, that's feeding the giddy minds is religion. Um, now, I'm Roman Catholic. Well, maybe I'll say this, but, you know, this this pope and the last pope especially, they've been just some New World Order, um, you know, advocates. That's what they are. They really just hold... I mean, I, you know, I'm Roman Catholic, but I'm going to tell you, the Roman Catholic Church in 1950s and what it is today, it's far different. It's, forget it. But, you know, it's always been kind of screwed up. There's always been things, you know, or, you know, but this is another game where they're, they're playing on the giddy minds. It's like, oh, it's written in the Bible that it's going to be this way, or, you know, the Lord says this, and the Lord says that. Keep your mind off that garbage, because I want to tell you, you know, if it's true or not, it ain't nothing you can do about it. You know, what you can do about it is what you can do for yourself right now. And one of the aspects, I could say, with silver, though, where it's worth something no matter what, is the medicinal values and the antimicrobial values. That's something I've been harping on forever because even 3.9 silver, you can make very good, high-quality colloidal silver, ionic colloidal silver with which not as only is antimicrobial, but it also helps uh, generate stem cells in the body. But, you know, silver is something that you can put a little bit of it in some kind of um, food or whatever, or, you know, you know, it could be a food that has some kind of liquid in it. Put a little colloidal silver in it. It'll preserve it a lot longer. You've seen these tests where, you know, somebody took a glass of milk and put a little colloidal silver in one glass, and the other glass didn't have colloidal silver. The one that didn't have colloidal silver curdled right up in short order. It, it's, uh, you know, it's got a lot of practical uses to it. There's no other metal that's called a precious metal that's commonly known that has those kind of uses, except silver. That's why you really can't go wrong with it. I think that not only, the pro- not only like, if there's problems in the Middle East and you have, you know, astronomical increases in oil prices, which will drive up gold, silver and all the commodities and also say there is a crash in the equities which will drive gold up which will help also drive up silver I think silver is going to have this um, you know, when people start relearning what was known 150 years ago about silver being able to preserve you know, the quality of milk or even the uh, potability of water and it can be used um, <coughs> on bandages <coughs> to help keep wounds from being infected and also help the body heal faster if you put colloidal silver on bandages. Everybody's going to want some, and there isn't enough to go around because most people don't have any. That in itself can drive the price up quite a bit, and that's and that's a curveball right there. A lot of people aren't thinking of mm. And that Pope, I don't know what he's doing over there with that girl looking at her, but <coughs> that's our Pope, you know. Now, we just want to put this uh, uh, map out here to country according to Rednecks. <laughs> you know, this is uh, somewhat true. Um, you know, America, you know, talking about, you know, you got Texas, Arkansas, Missouri, Alabama, Georgia, half of Florida or so, uh, North and South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, uh, Missouri, Nebraska, you know, Iowa. And, and, you know, you look at, you know, this is the midsection. And probably, if there's ever really a cataclysmic collapse of the economy, this is probably the most likely place in America that's going to last. Um, and I'd see a lot of parts of California, too, believe it or not, because even though they got this label, gay people, California, um, it's mainly just on the coast. But California's got a lot of open land and a lot of hardy survivors out there, too. Um, and I can even say that even up in the Northeast where they got some more gay people. But 
when you got when all these major cities have problems with um, you know food price increases due to like uh, you know we're coming up to that situation too. You know the mini ice age is going to cr- put a big dampener on food production, which is going to bring the food prices up, which is going to cause a lot more social unrest. I, I personally think Donald is good as a one-term president, to tell you the truth. I don't think he's perfect by any means. But it could have been a hell of a lot worse with Hillary, I know that. But uh, I think he's a one-term president because of what's coming up in the economy before he gets out. They sink the economy and they bring down these markets. Um, we're going to have a doozy of a president, and that might lead us into World War III. So, I don't know. I'm just going to tell you that for now, you're just going to have to be practical-minded on every damn thing. I don't just put out just I don't just don't put out one videos on one separate subject. And unfortunately, I can't put out all the kind of videos I want. I noticed even when I just put out anything about Southern or something, they don't like it. It's like they automatically give me a yellow asterisk on the monetization. I put out a video recently, uh, my Southern Awakening. You know that's mon- that's a, that's unfriendly for ads. I was like, "What? What's going on with this?" So, you know, unfortunately, I, I don't even know other any other venue out there that you can really put this information out that you can reach anybody with um, significantly. Because otherwise, I mean, I can reach more people just by the telephone for crying out loud than I could down the internet with some of the other freaking places out there. But to tell you the truth, I think the situation that we're coming up in the United States, although I know this sounds like doom and gloom, but the reality is it is doom and gloom. The hardcore basis of the work ethic, where people just, like, do their own stuff, and they do, they put hidden quality into items and things like that to do a little extra, there isn't that, it just doesn't exist anymore in America, hardly at all. Unless you're talking about more an area that, in that map when I told you, the redneck area, it doesn't really exist with the majority of population anymore. Um, you know, it's going to be kind of a difficult trip, I'm going to tell you, going down this road because, uh, you know, I'm looking to get out of Florida for one, and it, that's going to be a pretty damn difficult move, I can tell you right now, when I start looking at all the logistics of everything. But, uh, you know, um, I think that people, if they um, work hard and they keep what you know the right type of interpersonal relationships it's going to be fine but you know what the more diversity we have in this country the less that's going to happen and you know that's one of the problems we got we got the clash of cultures to the max if hillary clinton was in we'd be going down the tubes right away and you know what would that do to the price of silver to tell you the truth i don't know but I think what is going to really drive that price of silver up is conflict in the Middle East. That's what I've been saying all along. Problem is, conflict in the Middle East is probably going to lead us to conflict with Russia, which is something I definitely do not want to see happen. I'd rather see the United States and Russia work together very strongly and um, be a power in the world to keep peace in the world. We we work, you know, we're basically joined at the hip for crying out loud. You know, I think. Russia, if, if Russia's got to be an equal partner, fine. That's the way I look at it. Um, that's my opinion on that. But it looks like the elite are looking to antagonize Russia so they can push, you know, with an end result, if the war is bad enough, they're going to have it as, um, you know, a global government. But, you know, what's going to happen with this conflict is going to cause commodities and gold and silver to go right through the roof problem is you're going to need to survive in the meantime you're going to need to be more practical and not just focused in on gold and silver that's just how it is now there's always a bright lining uh, on every dark cloud and uh you know with david here remember david down south florida that's the face you make when you just sold over 500,000 uh <laughs> nra memberships <laughs> you know this guy this guy's this guy's a work of art but anytime you say anything against him, YouTube will call it bullying. I'm telling you that right now. That's how they are, man. This guy reminds me of little mini Goebbels, for crying out loud, you know? Joseph Goebbels, propaganda minister, except not as smart. You know? Guess back in 1935, if I said something against Joseph Goebbels, Google YouTube was around. 
They probably wouldn't let me say it, right? That's, that's annoying, man. I tell you that right now. That's very much annoying. Um, but getting back to a lot of things, you know, I'm going to tell you a lot of times, even a lot of times, these people that are on with the doom and gloomers, with uh, the silver videos and all that kind of garbage, I'm going to tell you, there's some, there is some truth to this doom and gloom stuff. It's not, it's not like fakery. Because, you know, the actual basis that we have to, uh, um, you know, it made our nation strong in the first place, it's just not there anymore. People just aren't the same. They don't have the same work ethic. They don't have the same integrity. Everybody's freaking glued to their damn iPhones or computers or whatever the hell it is. They're not doing the same kind of stuff they used to. Now, right now, you know, I would be out there working on my car, but, you know, it's freaking raining out like crazy. And uh, I said, oh, hell, just to make a video. Uh, but, you know, the other side of it is, too, you know, a guy I always admire, admire, too, that, you know, he's not American, he's an Italian, Giuseppe Garibaldi, he actually helped reuni- reunification of Italy. He's the guy that actually took away the Vatican from the Pope. <laughs> and I was like, Mussolini gave it back to him, unfortunately. But uh, that was a, that lasted for decades. And one of the things he said was the priest is the personification of falsehood. And, you know, it's not just the priest, it's the politicians, it's the priest, it's a lot of these people in suits, it's the carpetbaggers, it's the scallywags, it's the whole nine yards, you know what I mean? Um, when it really comes down to it, who can you trust? You can trust yourself and your own skills and having your own good health and your own good work ethic. That's really what it comes down to. And once you get that all straightened out, then when you know people of like-minded nature and you work together, then you're good to go. That's really what it is, right? But you know, this this uh, uh, this motto here, the priest is the personification of falsehood, could very easily be um, applied to politicians, all of them, both sides of the aisle, including not just you know not just the communist Democrats, but also Republicans, and pretty much all of them. They call themselves servants, just like the priest will call himself a servant of God. Where me, you know, they're on the they're on the grain doll. Just like politicians call them servants of the people, they ain't servants of the people. They're servants for themselves. Just like all these people out there, even in big business and banking, acting like they're doing somebody a favor for the community. No, they're not. No, none of them are. But someday, the cat lady's going to sing, and we're going to find out what the end result of all this garbage is going to be. Um, I'm going to say that, again, silver... If there's a broad, wide awakening, in other words, say, for instance, people do not have access to as much health care, or maybe they don't even have, you know, maybe they don't have electric as much because, you know, refrigeration becomes their problem because they can't pay their electric bill and they need to keep food fresh. I'm going to tell you, this silver stuff is going to get very important once people feel it and find, find out and realize that it could be uh, used to preserve food used to um, um, keep um, wounds from becoming infected, also help wounds to heal up better because it helps the stem cell production of the body in a localized area where the colloidal ionic silver is. Actually, it's the ionic silver. Um, you know, way back when, it was, a, it was a standing order of the Roman soldiers to ingest a denarius, which is their silver coin, and to keep it inside of them at all time. When they excreted it, they had to wash it off and then re-ingest it because the microscopic silver would help keep their health stronger. That was known way back in the Roman times with the Roman soldiers. You know, the farmers all knew about it back here in the, in the pioneer days. They knew, like, they would get a silver pail, silver-lined pail, uh, to milk the cows because the silver-lined pail would keep the milk fresh for many times longer than if it wasn't a silver lined pail. People used to throw a silver dollar in a barrel of water to keep it fresh. All well, used to throw silver dollars down in the bottom of a well to keep the well water fresh. When that, when that knowledge becomes more widespread and people need to have that type of antimicrobial and healing benefits, it's going to go, there isn't enough silver out there even for everybody in the United States to even have a couple ounces. It's gonna, the price is going to go up quite a bit. It should just from that reason alone. But that's going to have to come down to a real emergency situation where people start getting widespread knowledge that silver is one of your most important prepper items to have. You know, that's when the cat lady is going to be uh, 
ruling the roost here. But anyway, um, <clears throat> just want to say that, you know, this, this long ride with silver being it's so massively depressed, it's good in a way and it's bad in a way. You know, it's not one of these things where you sit on your ass. It's, it's definitely never was a good get-rich um, investment. But uh, I'd be very leery of parting with silver even at higher prices because of the benefits I saw. You know, I know of it. Um, and I think, you know, if things really start breaking down a lot, and I think they will, if there's ever a problem with our grid system, communication is going to break down drastically. Um, you're not going to be able to just go to a bank and say, you know, or a, a, a bullion dealer trade in your silver and have your your, your money wired to uh, your bank and all this kind of garbage. It's just not going to happen. It's going to have to be that people understand what silver really does in a practical world. And when, once people do understand that, you know, it's going to be very, very, very tradable. Because... There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. I mean, what else is out there that can actually heal, help the body heal, generate stem cells, and be that in, is 100% antimicrobial? Nothing. Nothing. You can't you can't replace it with anything. Actually, before they used um, penicillin, widespread penicillin, it was colloidal silver that was the main anti antiseptic all the time. It was commonly used in the uh, medical field. Actually, silver is far superior to all these antimicrobials that are out there. Far superior. There's no profit in it. That's the problem why you don't see it around in the medical world. So, eventually, it's going to come full circle. And eventually, we're going to return to some uh, freedom of speech, too. Because, uh, you know, everything has a life of its own. When you start trying to squash down something, it's almost like trying to um, put the screws down on a boiling pot. People will have a yearning for truth. And what's going to happen eventually is the pot's just going to burst burst open. And then all the truth's going to come out. And uh, the people that are trying to hold down free speech, they're going to get scalded with the water. That's what's going to happen. I'm getting tired of talking tired of it, to tell you the truth, and, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm still plugging away on YouTube, but I can tell you right now, there's been a lot of, um, you notice what's been happening, now my channel didn't really get hit with like these other channels did, because I have such a broad, wide content, but I noticed like, you really can't say nothing on here anymore, it's getting ridiculous, and um, I don't think I'm bothering to request manual reviews anymore, because I'm getting tired of this garbage. I'm getting very tired of this garbage. And, you know, if they got their filters set that crazy, I don't know what the hell they're even in business with doing this stuff for anyway. Because, obviously, the filters aren't set for the major news networks. That's obvious. So I know, and to tell you the truth, when um, I used to have cable TV many, many, many years ago, probably a couple decades ago, I hated it, and I kept subscribing to more channels to see if there's anything good on there. It's all garbage. If YouTube ever goes mainstream like cable TV, it's going to go right down. It's going to fall faster than this lady did from the skies with her with her golden wings here, or with her feathers. Because um, the only thing I see on YouTube that I find worthwhile is listening to people that are not professionals. I never listen to even the largest channels, ever. I, I go with the old model, YouTube. You know, it's like individuals. I'd rather listen to an individual than a glossy presentation from some prepackaged garbage that probably isn't telling you half the stuff they don't want. They don't, you know, they leave out a lot of stuff that you should know. So anyway, I just gave you a pot, hodgepodge of different things on here because I, that's usually my method. I don't like going over charts and stuff because... Um, to tell you the truth, we've been in a long range, long range. Um, there should have been a turning point on silver a couple of years ago, according to long range MACDs. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't, you know, we all haven't seen it yet. It's just been steady and slow. 
But unfortunately, when silver goes up, we're going to have a lot more problems in, in this. You know, I'd almost rather see the silver prices be lower and not have the problems. You know, it'd be nice if just the silver prices went up and everything else didn't go up, but that's not going to be the reality of it. When silver goes up, food prices are going to be high, energy prices are going to be high, and your essentials are going to be high. Big ticket items like furniture and maybe cars or something like that on the used car lot are probably going to be low, but your everyday essentials to survive are going to be high. That's when silver is going to be high. So it's a two-edged sword. You really have silver as partly as a hedge, but then again, it's a very unique hedge because there's nothing that can replace it for medical benefits and also the stem cell regeneration benefits. No other metal has that. So, uh, you know, to me, that that tells me just to keep it anyway, no matter what the price is, because nothing can replace it in the practical world for, like, disinfectant, food preservation, liquid or water preservation, and helping your body heal, helping a wound not get infected. Nothing can replace it. It's, you know, one ounce of silver can make gallons of colloidal ionic silver solution. Nothing can replace that. That alone is something right there. If it was widespread knowledge, everybody would own this stuff and the price would be up through the roof because then everybody would be saying, well, you got to have this, you got to have this. But people are still widely ignorant of what silver can really do. Not just from it's been used as money in the past or the coinage used to have silver just from the practical everyday value that we can get out of silver. People just don't get it, man. And they, they're not going to get it until everything falls apart. I know I'm going to be having mine, though, that's for sure. <laughs>